Hello friends, one of the most important uh, to understand the material behavior is crystal systems and structure. Okay, so, if we understand the crystal structures, we will be able to understand the material behavior in a much better way okay, and actually a lot of properties depend upon that what is the crystal structure of the material. Okay, so, today's lecture we will consider, we will talk about first we will talk about a lattice okay, and then we will come to the crystal systems and crystal structures. Okay. So, when we want to understand the crystal systems or structures, basically the lattice is the framework which you can use to understand that what do we mean by crystal system and structures. Okay. Lattice in loose sense you must have used a lot of time that whenever you want to see, you see a regular pattern. Okay you say that okay this is a lattice okay for example nowadays you must have seen on the pavements okay you put those tiles okay some very nice shaped tiles okay and uh, they are uh, put next to each other you must have seen the or you must have seen the uh, the the uh, the honey bees okay they the, the the structure they make which is a very nice hexagonal lattice okay so the lattice is there in the nature and you must have seen uh, it okay so the the basis for crystal systems and structure is start, starts from the lattice okay so first let's understand the lattice the, this idea was uh, actually proposed by uh, Brevice, okay, that is why they are called Brevice lattices. Okay. So, in this particular lecture, we will cover the lattice in 2D and 3 dimensions, uh, 2 dimension and 3 dimensions and a unit vector and cells uh, and uh, then we will talk about lattice and plus basis to make crystals okay, and then what are the different crystal systems and crystal structures. Okay, so, the Brevice uh, uh, proposed that, uh, that uh, the idea of lattice okay, and using that idea of lattice he proposed that there are, can be only 7 crystal systems and 14 crystal structures. Okay. So, you can understand and he, this uh, work he did in 1850 okay, and you can understand that in, at that time he could predict what will be the crystal system and structure in all the natural or man made materials which are possible okay and they are still uh, th th there is no change in that okay they, it is still holding okay and he could do that only by doing geometry okay so he must have spent a lot of time and lot of thinking okay he, and of course he uh, did not have any distractions of TV and your your smartphones and all that, which we nowadays have all these distractions. Okay, so he did not have that obviously, and because of that, I think he could have devoted lot of time and energy in this concept. And using geometry only, he proposed that only these many crystal systems and structures are possible, and with all the fancy tools which we have nowadays it is still holding okay we don't have any other uh, than what he proposed in 1850 okay so the and ideas were uh, very nice and elegant okay so starting from 2d lattice that what do we mean by lattice okay the important properties of a lattice is that a lattice has exactly same surroundings okay this is very important or uh, uh, if, if you like you can ca call it as a same scenery is there. Okay. So, if you take any lattice point and if you see around that lattice point other lattice points if you see the surrounding has to be same. If I take this lattice point and suppose I take uh, maybe uh, uh, another lattice point after 10 lattice points and if I, I, I also check surrounding around that lattice point between this and the new one there should not be any change it should be same okay the scenery has to be same okay so the surrounding has to be exactly same okay of course you have to look only from one direction if you want you are looking from another direction the surrounding will change but from that direction if you see any lattice point you choose any lattice point the surrounding around that lattice point will be exactly same okay so from looking from one direction 
if I choose any lattice point okay, and it ca there can be infinite lattice points. Okay. So, it is an imaginary concept you can ex uh, extend it to the length of the universe if you want. You choose any lattice point and around that the surrounding has to be same. So, this is the first uh, property it should have. How you can make a lattice is a very simple thing. Okay. The, the most important property it should have is what we call as translation symmetry. Okay. So, basically if you have you start with one lattice point, if I you give you two translation vectors okay, in two dimension, then you will be able to get all the lattice points and up to infinity. Okay. Again you can take, take example of the pavement. Okay. So, if I want to fill the pavement, okay, there is a pavement or any porch let us say and I have to fill the whole uh, area. Okay. So, what I will do? I will put first tile then I will put the next tile. So, by one translation I have put the next tile. So, from the center of the tile if you see from this center to the next tile center there is a you can say it is a, a, a vector is there. Then I put another tile. So, like that if I keep putting or I can keep translating the vector okay, then you will get the whole area covered okay, and you have a lattice. Okay. So, in, in the lattice also the most important property is it should have a translation. Okay. That means, by translation of a one unit vector I should get the next lattice point, another uh, translation of that same unit vector I should get the next lattice point and so on. And that is why the surrounding is same because it has a translation symmetry. So, everywhere the translation has to be same, okay. the translation vector has to be same. Another very important property it should have is called rotation symmetry. We will not cover uh, or not dwell into rotation symmetry too much, okay. but uh, we will use translation symmetry to understand the lattice and to construct a lattice. Okay. So, like, let us start with a, with a lattice point like that. Okay. So, this is a lattice point uh, and we want to create a two dimensional lattice. Okay. And, uh, Suppose I have defined a unit vector a, a in this direction and suppose I, so when I translate it by a in that direction I should get the next lattice point. Okay. Similarly, if I keep translating I should get the next lattice point by the same vector a. Okay. Similarly, I can have another vector b okay, in another direction and if I keep translating by vector b in another direction I should get the next lattice point. So, if I do a vector translation of this a actually it should have been little bit larger here. Okay. So, by doing a translation of a I should get the next lattice point in this direction in the direction of a. If I keep translating by a vector b in this direction in the direction of b I should get the next lattice point. And if I keep doing that, I will fill the whole uh, area here. Okay, and I should get the lattice point. And if you see the the surrounding, as I was telling you, suppose you choose this lattice point. If I check the surrounding, okay, so you have one lattice point here, another here, and the distances they look very same. Uh, then what I suppose I choose this lattice point again the the surrounding is same. So, for each lattice point the surrounding is same and that is because you have this translation symmetry. Okay. So, this translation vector can be easily represented by a mathematical equation like this that m into a you go in this direction n into b you go in b direction you will get the whole translation. If this vector is the unit vector then m and n becomes unity. Okay. So, it is simply the translation in by a and b vector in the direction of a and b respectively. Okay. And by doing that I can get the full lattice. Okay. Now, what should be the choice of unit vector and unit cell? Okay. That is a arbitrary choice. Okay. There is no unique uh, way of saying that okay, this should be the unit vector or this should be the unit cell. Okay. So, the unit cell is the cell which kind of represent that particular lattice. Okay. If I choose a unit cell it is a representation of the whole uh, lattice. Okay. So, that is the idea of a unit cell. So, suppose again as I we did earlier that A in this direction and B in this direction will construct the whole lattice. 
okay. I can also construct the lattice by instead of choosing B, I can choose uh, another vector which is C, okay. And if I do that also, then I should get the next lattice point and so on, okay. So, the idea here is that there is no unique way of defining a unit vector, okay. I can choose any vector as a unit vector and still I can construct the whole lattice, okay. Similarly, the unit cell, I can choose any unit cell for example, uh, covering these four lattice points, I have chosen a unit cell like this or I can choose a unit cell like this, okay, May, but in this case now it is covering uh, more than uh, or it is covering six, uh, uh, six lattice points or I can choose a unit, uh, unit cell like this also, okay. Uh, repetition of this unit cell will also give you the lattice, okay. So, the choice is arbitrary, you have to choose it according to your own uh, uh, idea of the lattice, okay. The, the basic of choosing a unit cell is that it should represent the lattice, okay. So, if you see this particular lattice, it, look, it looks like a square lattice, okay. That means A and B vectors are same, okay their length is same. So, both the vector have the same, uh, same uh, uh, distances or same magnitude, okay. So, that means that if I choose a square unit cell for this, that is actually able to represent this particular lattice, okay. So, choice can be anything out of these three, but still I will choose this square lattice because it is able to bring out the uh, the property of the lattice, okay, that it is a square lattice, okay, it has a square symmetry, okay. Now, coming to three dimension lattice, okay, again the same thing can be done in three dimensions, okay. So, uh, in now instead of two dimension, it is an infinitely regularly spaced array of points in three dimensions, okay. So, you can see a nice uh, array of uh, uh, lattice points is there, okay. And one of the unit cell is carved out of that which is able to nicely represent this particular lattice, okay. And in this case it is a cubic uh, unit cell because it has a nice cubic symmetry to it, okay. All the three uh, lengths are equal, okay. So, that is why we have chosen this one. We could have chosen a unit cell like this also where this is extending up to here, okay instead of ending here. So, this could have been a unit cell, but it is not a giving you a nice representation of the lattice, okay, because it has a nice uh, symmetry where A is equal to B equal to C. So, a unit cell which has a cubic uh, dimension that should be the, uh, the right unit cell for this lattice. Okay, so, unit cell can be chosen arbitrarily, but you should choose it which represent that particular lattice, okay. So, A, B, C is in these three direction and now uh, my translation vector can be uh, instead of two dimension, it has to be in three dimension. So, M times A, N times B and O times C will give you the uh, next unit uh, or next uh, uh, lattice point and so on, okay. Now, Till now we have not talked about the uh, crystals or crystal structures, okay, or atomic arrangement. We have not talked about all these things. We have only talked about lattices, okay. So, lattices can be anything. It is a three-dimensional space, okay, and you start putting a lattice point here and now you define that, okay, after this much translation I should get the next lattice point in A, this much translation I should get the B this much translation I should get the C and if I keep repeating I will have, uh, I can have full or uh, fill the whole space here in this room, okay. And the cho choice can be anything for A, B, C and depending upon that you will have the whole uh, space filling arrangement for this uh, three dimensional space, okay. So, we have not talked about anything about crystal or crystal structure or atomic arrangement or s and so on. Okay. So, you have to keep these two ideas separate. One is lattice, okay, which is just a three dimensional space filling arrangement, okay. That how I can arrange uh, in this three dimension lattice point so that it will 
fill this room, room or to fill this three dimensional space. Now, if I start putting atoms or molecules or ions on this lattice point, then I am building a uh, atomic uh, 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 crystal structure and then I am talking about materials. Okay. Till that time it is, is a simple geometrical arrangement of points in three dimension, which has a translation symmetry okay, and which satisfy the, the requirement of a lattice. Okay. So, when you put a basis on the lattice point, okay, then it becomes a crystal. Okay. So, the crystal must have a lattice and a basis. Okay, and basis can be anything, it can be a one single atom, it can be a molecule, okay, two, two atoms combined sitting on the lattice point or it can be an ion okay, which has a, some positive or negative charge. Okay. So, that I am representing here with two different type of basis. In this first example, the basis is simple one blue circle and another one it is a, a blue circle combined with a red circle with two different diameters okay so now i will start arranging the the basis on the lattice point okay arrangement can be any way uh, the circle can be such that that my lattice point is at the center of the circle or in this case it is little bit in a offset position okay so anything can be possible but for all the bases, the condition should be same. So, you can see that it is offset, but the offset is of the same type in all the conditions or for all the lattice points. Okay. So, now I have put a basis. So, you can consider that I have put an atom. So, now it has become a crystal. So, lattice plus basis makes a crystal. This is another arrangement okay, of these two uh, circles, which is a basis okay, and I have done an arrangement like that. So, the arrangement is such that the lattice point is coming within the red uh, circle here. So, that will be same for all the lattice points. Okay. It, it cannot be that for one point the blue circle, uh, the lattice points come uh, within the blue circle. Okay. Then it cannot be a crystal. Okay. So, the, now this, this is another crystal with uh, suppose you can consider that it is a molecule here, two atoms are joined there and that is put at the lattice point. Okay. So, like that for different uh, crystals you can put different bases uh, for the la same lattice also okay, to get different type of crystals. Okay. Now, as I told you that Breivais said that there are only 7 crystal systems are there okay, and there are 14 crystal structures. Okay. So, how this concept of first let us see how this concept of lattice came. Okay. So, why this 7 systems are only the possibilities. Okay. So, to understand that you have to see that how I can have a space filling arrangement. Okay. So, for example, this is a 3 dimensional space a room is there. Okay. If I have to fill it this room what I should do. Okay. Basically, uh, if I take example of boxes, uh, if I ke start keeping boxes one above another, I will be able to fill the whole space. Okay. And that is how he, uh, Breivais also started that what can be the different uh, ways or uh, how what can be the different uh, type of boxes which are available which can give me this space filling arrangement. Okay. So, you can consider that how uh, or understand this lattice from the staking of the boxes. Okay. So, I am just giving you an animation here to have a space filling arrangement. Okay. So, th this is a three dimensional space here, okay. three vectors are there and I am putting a doing a staking. Okay. So, I took a, a, a box such that the, the three dimensions are same, A, B, C is same. So, it is a cube. Okay and I am putting over one another and I am trying to uh, the seeing that the whole three dimensional space can be filled by doing that. Okay. I can have another type of box okay, which is not a cube, it is a cuboid okay, and then I have another uh, uh, way in which I can do this space filling. Okay. So, you can understand and uh, you can now have different boxes. Okay. So, what Breivais did is by doing all this geometry he found out that only there are 7 possible ways to do this space filling arrangement or to. So, there are only 7 type of boxes 
to fill this whole three dimensional space okay and he started putting it on one another and saw that okay this this is satisfying my condition okay so you cannot have a box which is a spherical box okay or you cannot have a box which which has a curvature because then you will have some areas which will not be filled okay so you have to have a arrangement which is a space filling arrangement and this gives you a space filling arrangement okay so by doing this he proposed that there are only seven crystal systems okay which you can have so starting with uh, a very simple system uh, or box and that is cubic okay so in cubic a is equal to b is equal to c okay and alpha beta gamma equal to 90 degree okay so that means the three dimensions are same okay and the angle between these three uh, axis is 90 degree uh, one of the most simple arrangement you can think of okay now you start complicating the the arrangement okay so the first complication which you can bring is that a should be equal to b but the c dimension is not equal so a equal to b but c is not equal to both of these however the angles are still 90 degree okay so when you have this arrangement it is called tetragonal okay so these two example i have shown in the earlier slide to you again bring more complications i can say that a is not equal to b not equal to c that means that all the three are not equal to each other okay so a is different b is different and c is different now but the angles are still 90 degree to each other okay so angle between these three axes is still 90 degree all are 90 degree okay here also all angles were 90 degree okay so in this all these three cases angles are 90 degree in cubic all uh, uh, axis were same in tetragonal one axis was different in orthorhombic all the three axis are different angles are still 90 degree so this is the most uh, uh, you can say general uh, example from which you can get cubic or tetragonal okay by putting some constraints then comes now we say that ang uh, uh, the dimensions are same a is equal to b is equal to c alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma angles are also equal but they are not equal to 90 degree that means angle can alpha can be anything other than 90 degree beta can be anything other than 90 degree and gamma also can be another anything other than 90 degree but all the angles whatever it is let's say it is 60 degree then alpha beta gamma all are 60 degree uh, okay equal and uh, are equal to 60 degree for example then comes hexagonal so again a is equal to b but is not equal to c okay alpha and beta are equal to 90 degree but gamma is not equal to 90 degree now it is equal to 120 degree so this angle here is 120 degree but these two angles are 90 degree to each other so between a and c it is 90 degree between b and c which is again is shown as a because both are equal so between b and c is also it is 90 degree but between a and b it is uh, 120 degree okay though it doesn't look like a hexagonal to you okay it, uh, it doesn't look like a hexagonal okay but i can show you that how it will be hexagonal okay in the next slide then comes the monoclinic now a is not equal to b not equal to c so now all the three uh, dimensions are not equal alpha and gamma are equal to 90 degree but not equal to beta okay so two angles are equal to 90 degree but are not equal to beta so now beta we have not put any condition so beta can be any angle in the hexagonal case we said the uh, the third angle to be 120 degree but here we are saying the third angle can be anything okay so we are not putting any condition there so it can take any a, any angle okay whatever it like then the least uh, symmetrical is the triclinic so none of the dimensions are equal none of the angles are equal and of course they are not of course equal to 90 degree also so a, angle between the two axes can be anything any two axes can be anything their dimension can be anything and usually you find this kind of crystal 
system for geological samples okay for example rocks so rocks also have the same idea as what we understand in materials okay so a, a very interesting uh, uh, concept okay uh, but problem with the geological samples or rocks is that lot of these rocks have this triclinic symmetry and one of the most difficult to understand because nothing is same all are different okay so very difficult to uh, understand anything with the triclinic uh, crystal system so these are the only the seven system okay so how you got this seven system by doing this stacking of boxes okay so you make box of this all these different shapes you start putting it over one another okay and you will see that there is a nice space filling arrangement is there so from that he could understand that there can be only this seven ways which in which you can do that okay now from this seven comes 14 crystal structures okay so now he started putting lattice points okay at different places and he said that in cube for example there are three different arrangement of lattices are points are possible one is that all at corners you put the atoms or in this face centered cubic you can put at the face centered position also on the faces of the cube okay you at the center of the faces you can put one atom okay or you can have a body centered cubic condition where you can put the lattice point at the center of the cell okay so in cube you can have three different type of arrangements are possible in tetragonal you have simple one of course at the corner simple is everywhere so simple at the corner and then the next one is the body center tetragonal so there is no face center tetragonal here or base center tetragonal here okay uh, this is what is the greatness of that guy that he could do all kind of permutation and combination and then he said that if you try a face center body center it can be represented by a much easier or much simpler uh, lattice arrangement okay which is already he has defined okay so that is why those uh, lattice arrangements are not possible so but body centered one is a unique one okay that cannot be shown by any other arrangement so all these are unique arrangement you cannot show any one of them with any other arrangement okay so that is what is the uh, uh, greatness of that guy that he could see that or he could work out all these arrangements then as i told you in case of hexagonal i showed you only this much part of the cell okay that a and b are same c is not same as a and b but between a and b the angle is 120 degree between a and c and b and c the angle is 90 degree okay so this was the unit cell shown but if you repeat this cell three times so one is shown here if you take this one and put here like this and third time you take this one and put here okay then it will give you a hexagonal unit cell okay so that is why it is called hexagonal that if repetition of this gives you a hexagonal unit cell then orthorhombic all lot of possibilities are there you have simple orthorhombic on the corner positions body center orthorhombic orthorhombic where the lattice point is at the center of the this uh, unit cell base center orthorhombic so two unit cell at the base okay and face center orthorhombic where the unit cells uh, uh, sorry lattice points are at the face centered position okay. so all these are lattice points then you have rhombohedral only one possibility monoclinic has two possibilities simple monoclinic as base centered monoclinic and of course triclinic can be only of one type so uh, there are three system which has only one uh, possibilities one is rhombohedral one in hexagonal and one in triclinic okay so now of course uh, uh, some of the these crystal structures for example cubic one you must have done in your 12th class physics also or chemistry okay and you must have calculated uh, the linear density planar density okay and you must have also done that what are the 
dimensions of this phase diagonal or body diagonal ok. So, that I am not covering here ok. Uh, just uh, before uh, finishing this off actually in hexagonal uh, there is one arrangement is not shown here ok. This is not a close peg hexagonal ok. There is another hexagonal which is called close uh, close pegged hexagonal structure ok, uh, which I, I have brought this uh, ball model here ok. So, you can see that th these are the 6 atom at the bottom ok. So, you can see here also 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 1 at the center. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 1 at the center ok. This is the base, this is the top which is shown here. One, again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 1 at the center which you can see here ok. But you can also have another set of this same arrangement at the center of the cell here at the center of this cell ok and which is shown here ok. So, when you have this arrangement it is called a close peg arrangement. Why we call it as a close peg arrangement? This is the closest pegging you can have ok. For example, between the 3 balls here there is another ball sitting in the cavity of that ok and with a spherical objects this is the best pecking you can have ok. So, this is called a close peck arrangement in hexagonal system ok and where you have this kind of arrangement. So, you will have another set of the same arrangement in the center which is like this ok. So, this is a close peck hexagonal structure. If you want to see a same ball model for FCC it will look like this. So, 4 corner atoms ok and 1 in the center, uh, center of the face ok. So, this is a face and 4 corner atom and 1 at the face centered position. So, the, if you see the how the atoms are touching each other or what is the equilibrium distance between the atoms, the equilibrium distance will be in the phase diagonal in case of phase centered cubic structure ok. Whereas, in the uh, this direction you will see that there are some gap is there that means the bonds are stretched in these directions whereas in the phase diagonal the it is having a equilibrium distance ok. In case of body centered cubic it will be uh, along the phase di uh, along the body diagonal uh, it will have a equilibrium structure uh, equilibrium spacing uh, other places it will be a stretched bonds ok. So, this is uh, 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 example of a phase centered cubic structure and this is for an hexagonal uh, close peck structure ok. So, with that uh, uh, I am finishing this lecture ok in which we have covered the lattice ok crystal systems and crystal structures ok and the detail of these uh, uh, we will uh, do or use lot of the ideas of this crystal. Uh, the structure of the especially we will be uh, using example of cubic uh, systems. So, and simple cubic also uh, you do not see much. So, the most of the metallic material will be uh, either in body centered cubic structure or face centered cubic structure or hexagonal close peg structure ok. So, we will be taking only these 3 in more uh, you will be using in, uh, in to understand the material behavior. So, with that we I will thank you for having patience and understanding this concept little bit difficult, but uh, I think you will be able to catch it ok. Thank you.